In this video, we're going to be looking at the searching algorithm for a binary search. So what's the recipe when doing a binary search algorithm? And this is going to try to find a particular value inside an array. So here we have an array of names and we want to look for a particular value and find where its position is in the array. Now, the key thing about a binary search is that it works on a sorted array. So you can't use this on an unsorted array. This is an, a sorted array algorithm, and the reason why we would use this is because it's a much more efficient way of searching for a value. It finds the value a lot quicker than just using the linear search. If you don't know what the linear search is, go look at our video on the linear search. I like to call this uh, search the telephone book sort. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have ever used a telephone book. I know with cell phones and smartphones, we don't tend to use telephone books much these days. But um, in the old days, we had a telephone book which had all the numbers of everyone in your, your province or city in this big book that you had. And what you would do, if you were looking for someone's name, say we were looking for someone for a smith, what you could do is you take that telephone book and you open up in the middle and you find out where you are in the middle of the telephone book and you come across the M's and you know that the smith would be on the right-hand side of the M's. So you would forget about the first half of the telephone book and just look at the second half of the telephone book. And then carry on looking like that. So it's a very similar way of, of doing that when you are searching for a value in a sorted array. So this binary search works on that principle, the, what I call the telephone book sort. So let's have a look at how it works. So in this example, let's say we are looking for Nsika. He is at position 5 in this array. But, and we know that it's sorted, but let's pretend we don't know that he's at position 5. What do we need to do when we're looking for this? Now, first of all, we're going to have a Boolean variable called be found, which is going to tell us whether we have found what we are looking for. So in the beginning, we haven't found what we're looking for, so we're going to set it to false. Okay, and then we're going to have three other variables that are going to determine um, how we're going to which parts of this array we're going to look for. We're going to have a lower bound or lower value, uh, which we will set in the beginning to the very first value in the array, which will be position one. We're going to set lower to position one. Then we're going to need to find an upper value, which we set to whatever the last value is in the array, whether it's a static value 8 or, in this case, our size. You might have a variable which tells you how many values are in the array. So in this case, our R size is an 8. So we've got our lower value and our upper value. Then we need to work out our middle of the array. Where is the midpoint of this array? And the way, the formula to work out the midpoint is you take the lower bound plus the upper bound and you divide it by 2. So if I take 1 plus 9 divided by 2, you're going to get 4.5. Now there is no position 4.5 because our positions are integer values. So that's not going to work. So instead of using a divide sign, we're going to actually use the div, which just tells us how many times does 2 go into 9. So 1 plus 8 is 9. How many times does 2 go into 9? It goes in 4 times. So our midpoint is going to be just slightly... Um, just slightly left of um, 4.5, which is position 4. You could also round it if you wanted to, but this algorithm works nicely with div. So we want to look at position 4. So that is our midpoint. And there are three scenarios when you are looking for a value. The first scenario is we just look at that midpoint. Is that what we're looking for? Is we, we check the midpoint. Is the midpoint that we found now, is that in seeker? Have we found a match at that midpoint? Were we lucky and got in the first time? And we go, no, that's not what we're looking for. So if it's not what we're looking for, the other two scenarios, if the midpoint is not what we're looking for, there are only two other possible scenarios. One is that what we are looking for is on the left-hand side of our midpoint, or what we are looking for is on the right-hand side of what we are looking for. And because it's sorted, we can look at that midpoint and compare it to what we are looking for. So let's look at Monde. Monde, there we go. And we're looking for Nsika. So Nsika, would it be on the left-hand side of Monde or would it be on the right-hand side of Monde if it was sorted? Well, N comes after M. So therefore, we know that Nsika would be on the right-hand side of Monde. So therefore, we only need to look at this half of the array now we can ignore the first half so this is how it's so more, much more efficient we've eliminated already half the array that we need to look through so once we know that we are looking to the right side we know that our upper limit is fine we want to carry on looking till then but our lower limit we want to shift 
till we, we know that the midpoint is not what we're looking for. So we can shift it just one after. Shift that low point to one after the midpoint. You say take the midpoint plus one. That is now going to become my new lower value. So uh, four plus one is going to be five. So our new lower value is going to be position five. That's what happens when you're looking on the right hand side. Okay. But now we need to recalculate our midpoint. So our midpoint formula, it's lower plus upper. So 5 plus 8 is uh, 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. But we don't use divide, we use a div rather. So 13, how many times does 2 go into 13? It goes into 6 times. So six position 6 will be our midpoint for this section. And then we do that whole test again. We go, okay. Let's look at position six. Sienna, is that what we're looking for? Are we looking for Sienna? Are we looking for in Seeker? So that is not a match. So then again, we ask, is what we're looking for, if it's not a match, is what we're looking for on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side? Now we look at Sienna and Seeker. Would it be on the left or the right? Well, S comes after N. So therefore, and Seeker would be on the Beyonce side. I mean, on the left. On the left, on the left. Um, so... She will be, or Zika will be on the left-hand side of Sienna. So if this is the case, our lower bound is fine, but now we need to change our upper bound. Now, our upper bound, we know that the midpoint is not what we're looking for. So we can go to one before the midpoint. So we take the midpoint minus one. So take that six minus one, that's a five. So our new upper point is going to be a five. Now, because our array is quite small, it just so happens that we only have to do this a couple of times and our lower and upper point are exactly the same point. But that's fine. Let's keep going. Let's recalculate our midpoint, which is the lower plus the upper. So 5 plus 5 divided by 2. Uh, how many times does 2 go into 10? It goes in 5 times. So our midpoint is now the position 5. So now we look. Is that position 5 what we're looking for? Let me look. In Seeker, in Se yes, that's a match. So once we have found a match, what do we do? We set our be found variable to true because we say, hey, we have found what we're looking for and uh, we record where we found this value. So wherever the midpoint is, that's where we found the value. So therefore, the position of what we're looking for is the midpoint. In this case, it's a five. And so there we go, record that five. Say hey, it's at position five and seek as at position five so we can get it back again if we need to. And because we found what we're looking for, we stop because we don't want to carry on looking if we found what we're looking for. We found what we're looking for. So we can stop looking. So we stop the loop. But let's let's backtrack a bit. Let's say uh, we were at this particular point and we weren't looking for Nsika. We were looking for Nancy. So everything would have been fine up until this point. But we would have said at this point, okay, is the midpoint and Nsika the same as the word Nancy? And we would have gone, no, it's not the same. It's not a match. So then we've got to ask, is Nancy on the left-hand side of Nsika or is it on the right-hand side of Nsika? Well, because it's, the ends are the same, we look at the next letter, so N-A. N-A would come to the left of N-T, so we, it would be on the left-hand side. And we know whenever we're looking to the left, we are changing our upper value. So our upper value will be whatever the mid value is. Upper value is going to be whatever the mid value is, minus 1. So we take that 5 minus 1. Our upper value is now going to be a 4. Now you're going to see now our upper value and our lower value have almost like swapped sides. They've crossed each other. And that's impossible. Um, if, if what we're looking for, it will never occur unless the only time that the upper and lower values will like cross each other would be if what we are looking for does not occur in the array. So the moment the upper and the lower values cross each other, then we can stop looking. Why? Because we know that we haven't found what we're looking for. The upper value is now less than the lower value's value. So therefore, they've swapped. So that's the other reason why we would stop looking. That's how we know we can stop looking. Okay. So let's have a look at the pseudocode. So we get the value we're looking for, and then we set our, our Boolean variable that tells us whether what we are looking for is being found or not. We set it to false because we haven't found what we're looking for. And then we have our lower limit, we set it to 1, and our upper limit we're going to set to whatever the size of the array. So those are our initializations. Now, let's look at our loop. We're going to have to loop through this, this um, uh, array, 
and we loop for two conditions. We loop while we haven't found what we're looking for, while we found is false, keep looking. And while the lower value is less than the upper value, that's fine. While the lower value is less than the upper value, keep looking. The moment the upper value becomes lower than the lower value, then they've crossed. Then we can stop looking. And what do we do first? Well, the first thing we do inside this loop, the, the while loop, is we calculate the mid value. So let's calculate that mid value by taking the lower plus the upper value and dividing it by two to find the midpoint. And we go look at that position of the midpoint in the array and compare it with what we are looking for. If the value at the midpoint is the exact the same as what we're looking for, that's scenario one. That means we have found what we're looking for, means we set B found true, we found a match and we record its position. Whatever the mid value is, that's the position of what we are looking for. That is scenario one. We have found what we're looking for at the midpoint. If that has not happened, okay, so there's our find the position of the midpoint. If, if we haven't found what we're looking for, then we must, comp there's only two other possibilities. If it's not what we're looking for, the other possibility is the value that we are looking for is bigger than that value at the, the midpoint. That looking value is bigger than the value at the midpoint. If it's bigger, that means we must look to the right-hand side of the array, which means we must shift our lower variable up to one after the midpoint. So if, we, if it's not what we're looking for, and it's not to the right of what we're looking for, then the only other, the third option would be that it's to the left. Okay? And that's the only other possibility. So I don't even need to check that. If it's not this matching, and it's not to the right, then it must be to the left. And if it's to the left, then we shift our upper value to wherever the midpoint is, just one before it. Okay, so that's our looping variable. And that's the end of our if statement. And then we end our while loop. All of that occurs in our loop. So those are the three scenarios. If we found what we're looking for at the position mid, then we have found what we're looking for. Else it's either to the right of what we're looking for, else it's to the left of what we're looking for. So those are the three possible scenarios. Once your loop has finished, and you've gotten to the end of your loop, then we're going to check that B found variable, just like we did in the linear search. If that B found variable is true, that means at some point during that loop, the B found variable changed to, that means we found what we're looking for. So we do the code that we want to do in the event that you found what you're looking for. However, if that B found variable is false, if we got through that entire loop and it never changed to true, then obviously we run the code that we do if we do, do not find what we're looking for. That's the code, that's the scenario of when we didn't find what we're looking for. So if be found happens to be false all the way through that loop and never changes, that means it never changed to true, which means we never found what we're looking for. Now let's go look at this in Delphi. So here we have a program where we um, got a sorted array. So let's just display what our sorted array looks like. So there's our sorted array. So there's a whole bunch of numbers from 1 to 26. And you can see that they are in numerical order. Okay, that's great. Now we want to find a particular value. Now in our sorted array, it goes up until sort size. That's how many values are in the array. So let's go find a number. So we find the value we're looking for. So we want to look, for example, the number 97. So, okay, if we want to find number 97, what do we need to do? Well, we set our B found variable to false. We set our lower to the first value and our upper to the, the value of the arrays, the biggest value in the array, which is the sort size. So however many values are in the array, that's the position that we want to make our upper value. Then our loop. While we haven't found what we're looking for, and while lower is less than upper, Keep looking. That means we those two haven't crossed. We calculate our midpoint, which is the lower plus the upper div two, and that will find the position of the midpoint. So then, once we've got that, we say, okay, at that particular midpoint in the array, take that position in the array. If that is what we are looking for, that means mid matches what we're looking for. It means we found what we're looking for. That scenario one, we set our B found to true. Hey, we found it. And we record the position of this mid say, so that we can say, hey, we know what we're looking for. We found it, and it's at this particular position, at the midpoint. If it's not at the midpoint, then we ask, okay, if the value that we're looking for is bigger than the value at the midpoint, so it's a bigger value. So let's say we're looking for 25, 
and we're looking for 97. That means it's, this is bigger. That means we need to look to the right hand side, look to the right. So if we're looking to the right, our upper value is fine, but we want to shift our lower value up until the midpoint plus one. So we take that lower value, go to the midpoint plus one, and we just change that lower value. We recalibrate the lower value. So we're looking at the top half of the array now, or the right side, right half of the array. We're looking at it that way. Then we're going to take, if it's not the midpoint, and it's not to the right hand side then the only other possibility is that it's to the left side of the array and in that case we're going to look to the left of the array which means our lower limit is fine but our upper limit needs to shift up to wherever the midpoint is one before the midpoint so that's what we do inside the loop and then we re go okay let's recalculate the mid value check for the mid value and we keep on doing that loop until we find it or until the lower and the upper value cross and then at the end of the uh, loop, if B found is equal to true, then we do what we want to do if we found what we're looking for. And if it's still false, then we do what we want to do if we don't find what we're looking for. So let's have a look at it and let's see if it works. So we can see our values. Now, if I'm looking for 97, we can see that the 97 is there. And we can go, okay, boom. Yes, it's found at position 25. But if I find a value, like let's say I want to look for position or value number 91, you can see there's no 91. 91's not in the array. Okay. So there we go. It works. Now what I'm going to do here, I've made a little, little, little memo control over there. And I'm going to, I've got a line of code right at the bottom here, which I'm going to copy and paste for me. I just want to show you how those values are changing. Um, so let's actually the moment we work out the mid value over here i want to display what the lower value is what the mid value is and what the upper value is so we can see how it's working okay so let's have a look so you can see that it's actually quite an efficient array, uh, search that it's only checking sections of the array and so that's why we use the binary search in the sort array because it's a lot more um, efficient so there we go it's sorted so if i want to find 97 the first time, obviously, it's going to start position one, and, and it's going to be click OK. Yeah, it's found at position twenty-five. So the first time it does it, it goes, "Hey, the lower value is twenty; it's at one, and the the upper value is twenty-six, and the midpoints are thirteen. So that it looked at position thirteen. That is not what we're looking for. So then it recalibrated the one up until the thirteen plus one, so it made a fourteen. So we looked from 14 to 26, recalculate the middle value, looked at number 20, it wasn't there, so we recalibrated the lower to 21, and so there you can see how it's working. Okay. If I was trying to find the number, so that one clear, but if I was trying to find the number, let's say position 40, let's position 50. Let's say I want to find position 50. Okay, so let's look over here, position 50. So there you can see it's recalibrating from 1 to 26, then 14 to 26, then 14 to 19, then 14 to 15. It's recalibrating the upper value down until we can get to that position 14. So there we go. You can see it's a lot more efficient by using the binary search when you're using a sorted array. For other videos in this module on arrays, as well as videos on Delphi and RT, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.